Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to a new lecture. We're going to be talking about association and dissociation. It is a neurolinguistic programming system that harnesses the power of creativity and problem solving that you can take advantage of and change your life drastically. It's a very simple method. And as I'm going to be explaining some examples, you will definitely be able to relate because at the end of the day, neurolinguistic programming and, and most of the approaches in NLP are very logical. When you think about it, you're like, that's right. This is how it happens. I can do that. I can be that. So let's get to it. Do you remember the last time somebody said to you, put yourself in my shoe for a second. Look at things from my perspective. See, and if you did, you probably noticed that your judgment might change. And see, association and dissociation can help you look at things from a different perspective. We usually tend to monitor things and act based on our perceptual systems and beliefs. If you see someone frowning at you, you might automatically think that they're unhappy. Well, what if they weren't really frowning at you? What if they saw something interesting about you and they were trying to admire it closely and attentively? This is how our perceptions and our beliefs about the world and about what's happening around us can shape the way we perceive things. See, if we put ourselves in another person's shoes, we see things differently. We see things objectively and sometimes we see things with a keen sense of creativity that is not limited to our way of thinking, behaving and believing. And this is exactly what association and dissociation is. And the difference between both should be pretty obvious here. When we talk about association, we are associating ourselves with a problem or a scenario through the use of our imagination and visualization. And when we talk about dissociation, we talk about dissociating ourselves from a situation and looking at it from a third person's point of view. And these methods can be used in your personal life, in your professional life, in any part of your life, really, where you have some kind of problem that you're trying to solve using a creative approach. When there is a problem and you associate yourself with it, you add on your own beliefs and perceptions to the problem. And then there is this bigger sphere of knowledge that is that is involved in it, which can help you find solutions. When you dissociate yourself from a situation or a problem, and then you look at it from an objective point of view, then you can also see the difference as your creativity is not limited to, to your objective perception of what's going on and your beliefs and your judgments. So I want to talk to you about the creative formula. In the book, Think and Grow Rich, if you haven't read the book, I highly recommend that you do. The author talks about a gentleman known as Dr. Gates, who used dissociation and dissociation methods in his daily life, and it was the foundation of his massive success. When you face a problem, and that's, that's his method, when you face a problem, try sitting somewhere comfortably and close your eyes. Now, in your mind's eye, form an image of the potential solutions you're looking for and add the parts that you solved already. Now, as you look at the solved parts in the bigger image, start to notice your thought process and you'll be getting ideas that can fill the loopholes and finalize the solutions image. In Dr. Gates, there's a lot of companies and organizations that used to pay him millions of dollars for him to dedicate some time and use the association and dissociation uh, formulas, creative formulas that he used to use on a daily basis to help them in any problem that the company was going through and that needed a creative solution. And you can use that in your daily life because oftentimes what happens is we dwell on things that are not working. We dwell on what we don't know, on what's wrong, but when we look at everything we know and we admire that and we start conceptualizing all the elements that we know, there are these thoughts that will start popping in your head because your brain is so eager to connect the dots and cover the loopholes that you'll start getting those inspirational ideas. 
And once you do, you can see how those ideas can fit in as solutions to the problem that you're facing. And the only way for you to actually experience it is to try the exercise. If you have a problem in your life, take the creative formula and try it. And while you're doing it, make sure that as soon as the session is done, that you write things down so you don't forget about anything. And you got to keep in mind that the state you're in is important. You need to ask yourself if the problem you're facing needs a creative approach or an objective and neutral approach. And based on that, you should calibrate your emotional and mental states. See, when faced with a problem where you need to look at other people's perspectives, it is better to redefine a neutral emotional state before you associate or deassociate. But if you're trying to solve a problem related to a work project or an essay or anything that needs a creative approach, then you should try to introduce an inspired emotional state beforehand. Keep in mind that how you feel can have a tremendous effect and impact on the result of this practice. So be aware of the state of mind that you are in when doing the creative formula, when using association and dissociation and anchor the mental state according to what the purpose or the aim is. And the last thing I want to talk about is the timeline of the method. So the last thing you need to take note of is that the, this method can be used in the present to solve a current problem, in the future to solve a future problem, or even in the past to connect with a past experience. And when it comes to the timeline of the method, there is another system called the visual timeline. You probably, you might have went through it already. And if not, then you're going to go through the lecture of the visual timeline really soon and you'll see how it connects to association and dissociation.